Hi everyone, this is Gail with Pretty Presets, and today I'm excited to show you how to fix acne and wrinkles in Lightroom. And for this tutorial, we're going to cover using two different tools. Mostly we're going to be using the spot removal tool, um, but we might also venture over to the brush, and I'll show you how we, that can help with wrinkles a little bit in, in Lightroom as well. So let's start here and the first thing I would tell you is that you're going to need to be zoomed in to at least 100% or maybe 200% and of course you would never show a client or whatever them zoomed in this closely because nobody really wants to look at their skin that closely but when you're trying to fix something in Lightroom it's very helpful to to be zoomed in that closely. So I'm going to come over here and in this toolbar that's just right below the histogram we have some options here and the spot removal tool is this little band-aid icon. We're going to click on that and at the top you're going to have a couple of different modes to choose from. Now the f one over here on the far right this is the clone tool. This is going to replicate the pixels exactly from one spot to another spot. That's definitely helpful sometimes. Next we have the um, healing tool, sorry, and for this one, this one's going to take the pixels that you're wanting to clone and choose pixels from another location and kind of try to merge those together to make the best looking option. And then this one is a fairly new addition and this is the content aware tool that will help you better remove objects and people from your photos. And we can cover that in another tutorial. Today we're mostly going to be talking about the healing and, and cloning tools. And for acne, which is what we're going to start with, I'm going to mostly choose the heal tool. Now there are occasions when I go back and forth between the heal or the clone, but generally I find the heal tool works better. For this photo, I'm even going to come in closer. Yeah. And then I want to make my brush tool or the brush that's gonna heal the acne. I want it to be the center to be just about the same size or slightly larger than the piece of acne that I'm gonna heal. I'm gonna click there and then I'm, off, I'm gonna check and make sure it did a good job. If it didn't do a good job, then I'm gonna move this other little circle around. You can change the size of your brush here by using the right and left bracket keys. Um, or you can use your mouse scroll wheel, whichever is easiest for you. So this is a little bit larger patch, so I'm increasing the brush size just a touch. Now, um, I think it did okay, but I can see that there's some hair in that. And <laughs> I would say that about 50% of the time, Lightroom gets it right. I would say it does okay. About 50% of the time, I think Lightroom, what are you even thinking about the spot that you chose to clone from? So that is one tricky thing about cloning in Lightroom is I'm moving, I'm, I'm moving things around often and making sure that I like what the option is and that it looks good and that I'm not adding something to my image that I don't want there or that I might need to clone out again. So I'm basically just clicking and looking and adjusting as needed. And this is how I clone out acne. I'm not sure why it went up by your eye. I would probably come down here and look for an area closer. This is why I think sometimes I'm like, what on earth? That one doesn't look too bad, but I think it's too light. I'm going to come down here and try to find something closer. So really, it's kind of a tedious process. It is something that takes time and it's something that I, I don't do on every image of a client, especially if they're further away in the image, but on any close-ups, if it's a portrait of a single client, often I am cloning out acne and there are times when I have to do a significant amount and that's just how it is. That's what it is when you're retouching a little bit. Okay, so this is what, I mean, I'm not done obviously here probably, but this is what I would end up with is a lot of these little circles um, cloning out things. Now here I could come down here. This tool is also good for cloning out flyaway hairs and you can see I have some of those hairs. I use this tool for that as well. Um, 
we can just see let's show this um, if here's where I might choose does the clone look better or does the heel uh, okay the heel still looks better here sometimes when you're cloning out a hair because the hair is so much brighter than the usually the background around it sometimes it merges those bright pixels and kind of makes something strange happen so you just choose what looks best okay if I want to clone underneath something I've already cloned which I do here I tap the H key that hides all those little spots and dots but then as soon as I want to move something around I'm going to tap the H key again because um, I need to see where those are at so you can do a pretty good job there of cloning out that hair as well okay so let's go over and talk about wrinkles just a little bit and we have a photo here of a more mature woman and again I would never show a client this close up because none of us want to see our wrinkles this close up or this in depth but when you're trying to fix something again you need to have it so here again I'm probably gonna stick with the heel tool but possibly pull in the clone just depending on what looks best for um, wrinkles I'll probably tend to get a little bit larger brush just depends on the wrinkles and what I'm doing but I would probably come over here and make something that takes in a few. Now, that did not pull from a good spot. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to move it. Now, if I do this too much, I'm going to end up removing all of her wrinkles entirely. And that will not look natural and that will not look appropriate or age appropriate. So with this, we have what's called the opacity slider over here in the toolbox. And I'm going to pull this down, I would say around 50% sometimes even lower than that because I do want those wrinkles to show through I just don't want them to be as prominent as they are right now then I would come over here and maybe try to do some of these a little bit deeper wrinkles um, let's see what we can do uh, let's see I would prefer something like this okay at 50 percent this one it's still not looking perfect I'm not sure that that is maybe too much oh I didn't change the opacity on that one that's why it's not looking right okay so pull it down see to about 50% where you're still seeing the wrinkle it's just definitely not as pronounced so that's how I would work with these wrinkles now I can do that for these wrinkles as well but I'm going to show you another tip that I use often for wrinkles that are a little bit deeper like this and that is to use the brush tool. We're gonna to come over here to the masking icon, which is in that same toolbar up here underneath the histogram. And I'm gonna create a new mask, and I'm gonna choose brush. Now, I have the perfect portrait collection from Pretty Presets, and in here, there is a skin wrinkle reducer brush, which is like magic, and I use this often. So over here, I'm going to come and I want to make the brush fairly small so that it's still larger than the wrinkle, but not too much. And for the most part, I just, I want it to be tiny. And I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to trace along this maybe more prominent wrinkle right here. And you can see that the wrinkle shows because there is shadowing in that fold of skin. And when we are using this tool, we're kind of lightening that little spot. And I can do that down here. I might need even slightly larger, not too much. And if I still wanted to clone, I could, but this is kind of a, a really natural way to, to lighten that area and maybe reduce some of its prominence, but not completely clone it out. I also use this um, sometimes in these folds between the nose and the mouth. Um, and I might have to reduce it a little bit here, because this might be even too much still. Come over and maybe we'll just reduce this just a little bit. Now for most of these clients, I will still soften their skin using a brush, but these are the things that I am doing to reduce wrinkles in Lightroom. And I'm really looking for more prominent wrinkles that I might reduce. And I will use a combination of the clone and heal tool and 
a brush to reduce wrinkles and I think that often this just helps a woman's skin just look a little bit more still natural, still age appropriate, but just a little cleaned up and a little more beautiful. And that's really what everyone wants. Now we can zoom out. We can come over here and turn off the tool and just make sure that everything's looking natural. We can check out a before and after. Let me pull back in my history and let's go back to um, before we did the, the healing and cloning here. Oops, we're gonna slow down a little bit. And you can see the before and after there where we can still see everything, but things are still looking pretty natural and still looking, you know, like herself, but maybe just a little cleaned up, just a little bit better. Anyway, hope this helps you as you are trying to fix acne and wrinkles in Lightroom.